Zen. It's more easy for you. And we say Chan, um, it comes from, originally come from Chinese. Um, it must be. Chan started from. But it's more, um, there's more topic, talk about it. I need to find enough time to do it. So let's go through these. And tell you what is Yi Jin. Uh, yi Jin. Why, uh, what is Yi? Yi is mind, and Jin is image or phenomena. And how Yi Jin is bring these two together. Uh, so, artist uses his personal experience, of life's experience, try to express it and the physical environment together. And also, Yi Jin is used in Chinese poetry painting, opera, and garden design. And the Yi is express the relationship with the universe and the artist in or herself. It's kind of mind studies as you, you create uh, image in your mind and you describe it by using different ways. Uh, say, this poet, this poem was done by one way the deer enclosure, as unfair of mountain, I met no one. I only hear the echo of human voices. Sunlight flicks through the dense wood, and the shines move upon the green moss. Through the words, you might able to imagine a picture in your head. Say the light coming through, but then you hear somebody, but you don't see them. Um, so that's what we call the Yi Jin. Do you kind of catch the idea? And um, I can read it to Chinese. Lu Zai, Kong San Fu Jian Ren, Fan Wen Ren Yu Xiang, Fan Ying Lu Shen Ling, Fu Zhao Qing Tai Shang. So you're working in the forest. And you heard, you don't see anyone, but you hear the echo from time to time, from anywhere. Um, so it kind of created that sense of experience through the poet. But you can have a painting as well, or a garden design. And what is Zen or Chan? You can see the Chinese character there. Down the left, the corner, that's something to do with spirit. And on the right hand side, that character is single, or so it's like a person experiences the spirit. Like bring up your spiritual level to a higher, more purity. Okay. And Chinese wisdom cannot be transmitted by any form of <coughs> but only my understanding. But in order to understand it, there's a lot of talk to describe what is that. What is the time? The, then sometimes you need to just have your mind, like look at your eyes. That's that's communication. And time is how <coughs> the relationship between internal sense and external matters. So you have a lot of internal <coughs> feeling of it, then there's a lot of external experience. You need to bring them a harmony, try to understand them. It's one with part of each other. You cannot separate. And for me, my understanding is myself as artist, and artwork and space, and the, the observer or the audience is part with each other. You cannot separate any one of it. And if part, if loose, is say my work doesn't have the observer goes into, then. It's not finished. I need to have the observer come into my work to help me to finish my work. And once they left, they, the, my work may be carried again in their mind. So that continues. Then, Chan is unity of man and nature and self-experience. So again, it's come back to myself as artist. and artwork, I create something. And then the nature is the surrounding environment. Then I be in there, create my work. I be experienced, or you be experienced my work. 
like this circle, um, Tang will say, or Zen will say, everything is constantly changing. So my thought and my action is constantly change. And my artwork is constantly change. The space is constantly change. The observers, the thought is constantly change, um, all, changing all the time. That's more time to change. Now, I'm interested in the Chan, the Yi Jin theory, which also applied to Chinese garden, as we said before. So I quote this, the wise man looks into space and does not regard the small as too little, no, the greater as too big, for he knows that there's no limit to dimensions. This was called by Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu, uh, who wrote the Tao Te Ching, the Tao series. And so small is big, big is small, and it's part of each other. We think that Tao is in diagrams, it kind of circle all the time. So the Chang Chinese gardens is an artistic format involved with Chinese painting, and poetry, and sculpture. And this created to <coughs> connect with nature in a three-dimensional environmental space, which employed stones, plants, water, and the architectural buildings, like pagodas, or tea houses, or theater as well, um, the, or pathway. And Chinese Garden also to pre represent a kind of miniaturized version of landscape. So everything is combined as into a small space. And in one of the concepts is in the Chinese Garden is borrow the scenery from outside space through water or windows. So it makes the space bigger. So we come back to the beginnings. The space is maybe small, but the sp actual space big, huge. So small within big, big within big, small. Then let's look at this Lin Family Garden in Taipei. You can see the reflection of the wind, the water. Then. We need to work into it, so make the space become bigger, wider, but it actually is limited. And through those windows, where the windows, you can connect this space to the next space. So make the space bigger. I have looked these, you can see these, that's the theater. Have a, and the opposite here, that's where the guests and the uh, their all house owners sit. And their their uh, wife or concubine, they sit on the side, and the children sit on this side. They watch the performer. Just some more information about Chinese garden. <laughs> and Japanese Zen gardens, I had Fortunately, I have the scholarship that I'm able to go to um, Tokyo, uh, Kyoto, to look at the um, old Japanese gardens. There are six type Japanese gardens. Um, imperial garden, tea house garden, dry landscape garden, which I am very interested in it. Is, you might see this. This one is it's located in the Ruanji um, temple in Kyoto, and it created in the uh, 15th century. And nobody knows who exactly who created it, but there's a small stone in one of it, a small action. This is massive space presenting the island. The, each rocks are an island. And there are 15 storms 
but how, no matter how you're sitting in the corner, you won't see 50 of them. You only see 14 of them. So you are changing your position to see the garden. Then you count where the islands. So you are, but you can, you're not allowed to walk into the gravels. There's only the person who in the temple can do the gravel. The audience, have you all sitting around here and here? And the color of the background are changing all the time. So things that in the circle is constantly changed. And your feeling will be changing too. I've been there twice. It's very nice. One day, if you have a chance, go <laughs> sitting there. It is very busy outside, but when you into the temple, it's very quiet. Right, installation. I'm talking about the installation here. Is my idea of the installations is a um, is a symbol symbol of um, relationship in mind between the audience and the artwork. The artwork and the space, and the space and the audience mind. The trifecta to earlier, I said, everything is part of each other. Um, without artists, artists without artwork, or artists create artwork, but no audience, the work is not finished yet. So that's why I try to research about my work. So. Art, I focus on the artist myself and create artwork in an environmental or site specific space. Then I wait in my audience or the observer or participant working into the space which is my work then to help me to finish my work to complete it. I've done a several project in recent my studies. They, um, I, should, I pick a few to show you the, my, how my work gradually to, be, um, to complete in the end. Um, because I can even see these, you might recognize where is it? <laughs> you can't search the central station. I like the space, it's kind of unusual space, so I approach the um, the station manager said, can I have a show here? Just put in my work to be there. I said, okay, we give you two days. <laughs> two days, can you give it more? I think <laughs> three days, that's more we can give it to you. Um, there's a it's display space just out up, um, opposite the ticket office. Um, you need to rent for it, you need to pay for it. But I don't, I think, okay, give you three days free. I bring my work into it. I testing out the space, unusual. And these, they are charcoal. And the central part, there's two parts of it. The central part is suspended. It's been moved from the ceiling to the floor, and it's in, it's in the air. And the circle on the floor, I see them as wave. So it's kind like of something drop into the wave, and I see the flow of the station is the water. So then the train coming in, the central piece become more flies. They push by the air, so they expanding or close. They move. Testing the space, I tested in my work. So it's changing all the time. It won't be just the form is there. Um, I practice Chinese calligraphy. So I thought one do it, and also I studied the Zen Buddhism or Buddhist. So I just pick um, the Heart Sutra, so which is only 260 characters in Chinese, and then I write it, each page. I write it every day, 
maybe one page or two pages or three pages, then put onto the wall to test it what maybe looks like. And, yeah, and that's a share. Writing it, like make it photos to recode it and work. And then bring the charcoal piece again, try to work to make it like humans. So a human is working in the space, standing in the space, then you change it, drop it. it. Then um, this is another piece. Um, it's in Chinese Art Center in Manchester. I wasn't going to do something. I wasn't planning like this. I just write on the page, maybe click of it and stuck on the wall. But it was failed, not able to stick on the wall. There were problems. So I suggested that Gary, um, can I write straight on the wall? They say yes, go ahead. So write to spend um, three, maybe four days to write every single piece of the wall. So just repeat it, repeat it, uh, the heart sutra on, on the wall, on the windows, on the ceiling, and you can see. And because a lot of light shines to create the patterns on the surface, on the floor, and people working into the space. So you change an inch, you're working into the space, then you change your perceptions, you change your view of that work. And the, me was there, I was there, right, wrote, wrote the trick of this, I created that work for you, for the audience. I make art, I cook food. That's what my daily life about. I maybe one of the people say it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so this is in a way good. Um, over there, kept continue to write my calligraphy. And I'm thinking, what else I can do? I cook it. It's, it's me. So I bring my cooking ingredients and cooking vegetables, these like, um, like ginger, garlic, um, chilies. Then I made dishes on the day opening in front of the audience, so people have a taste, become, you are my work as well. Then I go there after the opening, I go back to the scary, chopping the vegetable uh, every day. So I place on the shelf, you can see that it starts changing from day to day, they dry out. And there's some all the spring onions as well. So the work is still there, but it's still working, it's still changing it. By saying that, you give me a this is the um, calligraphy right on the windows. And because the opening, through the opening, was very humid, a lot of steams, so they started dribbling. So the audience helped me to continue to create the work. And this was the final project I created. I then I named it Brightman Tender Wing. Like I said in the early, it's our experience in our daily life, everyday life. So I need to find a space. I need to find my plan. The plan was a brief sketch. I didn't know where, before I choose the place, I didn't know where the place is going to be, but I just have a thought. And I would like to create an installation which people can experience it by using the Chinese gardens concept, um, installation concept, and then create my mind my mind image for the audience. So I draw a sketch. When the sketch comes out, I need to find a space. There are few choice in the in, in the Newcastle University building, fine art building. 
and this one is outside theaters. There's small space, and the other one is underneath the Hagen Gallery. They have two small shoe sculpture studios. There's two space. It's very, it's quite big. I'm thinking now, how, <laughs> how could I manage it? This, the space by myself, and so I think, what should I do with the space, two space, to make it then look like one space? And they're testing out. These were like kind of handprints with the clay, which is from the, the clay I made it for the um, we call stepping stones, and I printed out the. Uh, on the wall and create this small inflation. Um, so I prepare making stepping stone, making the water containers. You need some lead have some water container uh, in order to put some water make create a reflection. Then the clay wall I have put. Within you know, spent two weeks to install my artwork. Um, first thing I create a water font and it's 2.7 meters by 4 meters and the, it's about 6 centimeters deep. Then stepping stones. There are 19 clay stepping stones and it has been fire dry. It takes about um, 3 months to prepare this work. Um, bamboo growth and create a bamboo growth about the pond. It's not really attached to the pond. There's about a gap on the bottoms. It's suspended from the ceilings. And people can walk into the pond, walking into the bamboo growth. And bamboo growth is only about this gap, the path. So you can, you can imagine, when you walk into the bamboo, Bamboo will clap and create a sound. If it's too large a space, that's the hand prints. Oh, um, so I'm using the hand prints to print out. They are two different colors. I'll show you more later on. Might be the slides can show you more. Um, 15 water containers, and then place it on the table, on the floor. And these, it's brick clay floor. I went to um, just uh, in Gethsemane. There's there were there's a um, brick company. That, they give me. Play for free. All I need it is find the transport, bring it back. I just spend four times, four trips to bring the clay in order to cover a whole two space. The space actually might be three, um, three, three quarter of this space. So place it on the floor. The, the clay is either well, it's not dry. It's a soft clay, so you can trace your print. This is the final installation. So, when people walking into the bamboo growth, you make a sound. And it depends on how rushed you are, or it depends on the size you are, and it depends on the movements you work. Some people will be like a bit. I'm a bit. <laughs> So the sound, the, the bamboo create a sound. It depends on really. It was really funny to watching people or very calm to watch people <coughs> into the bamboo growth. And you thinking when you walking into that space, which is that end there, you might think I want to jump, but I deliberately make the space big enough not allow you to jump over. So. You need to, uh, as audience, you need to walk back. So ex you experience the space twice. So 
looking in, then you see the reflection. Likewise, says the Chinese God, you borrow scenery from outside to inside. So my space becomes bigger and wider and open to the outside world and bring the outside world into my space. My, uh, The exhibition was two weeks. From time to time, the clay gets dry and dry. Then it gradually it creates a crack. When you come into the space, there's a small platform. You can see I was standing inside the world and watching people coming in. They were standing there looking around. I had some of them that were hesitate. Should I go in or should I not? Once you step put in, they say, oh my god, the clay was soaked. That's my um, my aim to record everybody's footprints. So you are helping to continue to finish my work. So when it goes in, then the water dishes is reflect again to the outside and you create a light as well. So my work is constantly changing, changing on that person walking to the work. Um, I will call my project, the final work is a project in a environmental friendly space, a space for observe to experience, and the water is connection of inside and outside world, and S shape stepping stones. If you look back at the drawing I did, um, it's S shape, that interaction, representing the interaction of the yin and yang, B or nothing, and the positive and negative. It all happened, it all exists in Chinese philosophy or the eating philosophy. And direct handprint is represented in my existence in the space and the power of human strength. The, the, the handprint is as high as I can reach, so that's the limit to lead in there. Then the bamboo growth is in turn immediately interaction of the artwork and the audience. So you walk into the space, you create the work, you help me. And without everybody, every part, single part of this, then my work is not finished. But with your help, with the audience's help, my work is continued. The, the past, the present, and the future are one together. Future is when the audience see the work, they might take home with them. So my work is continued without writing or without any language speaking, but it's in the mind image as what eating is about. So that's my work. Mm -hmm. like to be able to see this now because it's you know so much about the space and that all the things you talked about this kind of interaction and, um, but you also you make it I, I'm thinking about the kind of conversation we're having earlier today about the kind of audience participation and how, how we approach a, pr approach a work of art and, and you make it feel a very kind of natural process very much part and parcel I say of the artwork um, I'm sure there's questions people would like to sort of ask because a lot of things that Chun has touched on which, um, comes in, in many ways from a kind of different perspective to what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Um, what would people like to sort of say about you know, as, as a response or some questions? I sort of got a feel, especially this, like 
working with elements like water, earth, wind. Is that linked to sort? I don't really know much about Zen, but is that is it's, important link? That is important. They that we say the five fifth elements is in there. Right. So the water, the earth is the clay, mm -hmm. and the the metal is the mesh, mm -hmm. and the clay maybe also has the metal. Um, fire, fire is the stepping stone being fired. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the wood, the 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 bamboos and I would add it the six elements is the wind. Yeah wind. The yeah. wind. Because you you when you even without audience in there, the natural the natural has created a wind. A wind that make the bamboo slightly bounce into each other as yeah. well. So it's just a very gentle mm -hmm. touch. And how they all work with each other as well mm -hmm. as like having all sense of all elements in one space. Yes. It's 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 you can admit it's only me myself finished that pieces. Um, but yes, I have help as well. Um, the technician helped me to bring the clay mm -hmm. um, um, to help me install the mesh. The rest of it, I took it me three months to, to do all the preparation. Nice. Given a duration that wasn't fixed, would the, would the artwork ever finish? So is, it, is there a finishing point when you say that, that work is finished? Or conceptually does the work that works always, always keep going? The work always keep going. It's, it's carry out carried by the audience as well. They, 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 you might, they are, they are few people talk to me about the work after a few years. <coughs> they say, I still remember the bamboo grove you create. And I remember I walking into the pond to see the space, to see the artwork. And that, that thing, that's the continuum. Would you sort of, um, do you think if that was installed somewhere, um, say, you know the garden that you visited in um, the temple, if supposing that was somewhere, would you see it as a continued piece that it would, it would presumably continue to evolve because the clay would um, get wet now and again and it would dry out and so it would constantly change. So do you think that would um, be an interesting thing to see or would you hate that if it was a permanent fixture? In this work, yeah. re install in some other place. Yeah. I think that would that the environment will be changed. Then the idea will change. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the I think the central fundamental concept is still there. It's it's changing all the time. Yeah. There's no we call it no uh, permanent. How would you feel about the reaction you're making to this piece? Because obviously it was like really important and very, a very I'll strong piece. It, and, and you know now we're looking at it, you know, quite a number of years later. And, and I think I'd imagine everyone's sort of, it's it's provoking a lot of a lot of thoughts and ideas. But would would you consider remaking it? I would, if there's a chance, I would consider remaking it. But it it will depend on the space. You say if I can allow to make the pond deeper, I would. If I can make the uh, bamboo grove bigger, mm -hmm. I would do it because you, at the moment, this one is only allowed one person go through. I could make the bamboo grove bigger, and so at the same time you can have a few others experience in different route, and that will change in the, the dynamic. The dynamic. So would you say that you're, um, you've um, built this environment in response directly to the space that you were given? Would it have been different if you had a different space? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's when, you, when the installation started to become a, a form that people are interested in, you work, you're working with that space. Yeah. You 
bring the things into the space to install an artwork, then the artwork allows somebody to work in or to see it. So you will, will create an artwork or hold into the space. Chinese models, uh, you know, it's much more about kind of reversal of that in terms of the, uh, I mean, nat the natural elements more up front. So is, is that something that you like? I mean, th this space seems quite hard, mm -hmm. and you introduce something that is, well, I suppose you could say it's quite soft, it's not that soft, but it, it is a kind of garden. Mm -hmm. And then in the in Central Station, you have a, you know, the ultimate kind of temple of Industrialization. Mm -hmm. We have this piece in it. Is that something that you you like the challenge of doing that? Or? I I like the challenge to create that um, yeah. it, uh, in different space. Um, I personally like really like the the um, stations mm -hmm. piece because you can see that the the central piece is moving. Time. Even the people passing through is moved as well. As long as you create the wind, the work expanding like you are, it's breathing. Then this is like you say the heart that bring the soft in elements into the heart environment mm -hmm. and make it become soft. It's and make it into a one piece used in different place. It's kind of complex. It makes more of a, um, a yin and yang with the, I, I call it Alison's thing, being in an urban environment, because then you've got the, um, <coughs> the yang, if you like, outside and the yin in the middle, I don't know, whichever way, but you've got a meditative kind of contemplative thing in, in a place where that really isn't the thing. So it, it has even more of the a positive, negative kind yeah. of thing. It's trying to uh, make balance, make yeah. a harmony balance between the two forms, yeah. the what would you say being or non-being, is it like you making something, but in the same time you lay the non-being be there, and so it's come back to the circle. Mm -hmm. Gardens, because obviously that you know that they are fundamentally within a, quite a natural environment. The, the wider environment of the of the Japanese temple garden, the, often the garden within a garden, yeah, the, like yeah. stone gardens, or within a, a bigger garden. Um, but the, there's a kind that of, you know they they are creating a sense of, of of the sea in a very in a very kind of artificial way, and it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it's something that's the sea was. The was the gravel? Was the, was the gravel? So yeah. So I'm thinking in a, in a, in, in, in a sort of also it's the opposite way. You you're creating something very artificial. This 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 garden, this natural environment within this very harsh, what could be seen as quite a harsh space. I mean, I'm thinking like that spot in Central Station. I saw a lot of you see, you know pass through that that area, and it's like it's the area where you know you, on a Friday, Saturday night you get. Get the police ready and waiting, or you get, you know, and she's created this incredibly beautiful, you know, installation, that was, um, which is quite, it looks quite, I, I didn't see that, and I wish I'd seen it because it's quite extraordinary in that, in that mm. environment, how, how much it feels as if it trans, transformed that space for, you know, for a, a sort of very short period of time. It, it, um The, the passenger was very interested to see them, their reaction as well. They say, wow, it's this. There's beauty moving it. They stood there, read it, the, the small description, or talk to me. I think this has become that you are, I, for myself, is I enjoyed being able to interact with the audience, with the, the people who come to see it. Um, 
get your idea, you, you present your idea to the public, the public will see back immediately. They don't show their face, they don't hide their feelings, they say, wow, it's good, you like it. You say, oh, I don't like it. You, you know, kind of explain why you don't like it, why you like it. You become more to able to understand, able to immediately react. Yeah, explain more about the more about positive emptiness. Is it? I don't know really much about Chinese. Is that ma or mu? Like, like the gap between the two thoughts or it's um, and it's what come in quickly. Is you if you see the Taoist diagrams, they have black and the white, and inside the white there's a small tiny black. And inside the black, the dark, is there's a white in it. So the white presenting the positive, the black presenting negative. But inside the negative, there's a uh, positive. Inside positive, there's a small amount of negative. And without these two, you, the circle cannot be finished. But with these two, the circle can be continued. Then it's like the, the yin and yang, the dark, the the dark presenting the night, the yin presenting uh, the yang presenting the daytime. So with daytime and nighttime, we have to be four hours time day. When you're asking about about ma, ma, is that right, Quinn? Yeah, yeah. I don't really know. It's kind of just like a silent pause in Japanese, it's called yeah. ma. I just read something also. It's, it, it signifies... Like the kind of empty, silent pause. The gap between two thoughts. It's like, I read it, I thought it was something brilliant, like a wave, wave. And then before it, when it fully goes out to the shore and then stops and then before it goes back out. It's that moment where what's the end? You right. breathe in and before you breathe out that. We had a student that did her dissertation. Yeah, uh, her her PhD on it. Yeah, like one of Chris's students. Yeah, we have a dissertation on all about Ma. Yeah. So right. yeah, we can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Many yeah. thousands of words yeah. to read. Right. Planning to make any more work backwards? If there is a chance. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's a challenge, but without a challenge, you cannot achieve this. Um, so it's free to, if there's an opportunity, I would like to. Yeah. And you will see, you will, the, li the life experience will change in your perception as well. You might be. I might be, if I get another opportunity, I make, maybe it's like, a, say, I make, maybe make the bamboo bigger, or change a different size bamboos. 